In this video, I wanted to share a solid process for photographing waterfalls. But, well, yeah, things, they didn't go exactly according to plan. <laughs> <laughs> you are joking me. That's certain death. That's the bridge we took to come up here. I think you need my narration of me crying like a little schoolboy. I'm not afraid of heights, but I'm terrified of things like this. Another day, another adventure, I almost said, but it's the same day, but it is a different adventure. Thomas and I have given up on the birds and we are now chasing waterfalls. Something I think both of us are much, much more comfortable with. And uh, supposedly, <laughs> I almost fell. Supposedly down this way, there are four gorgeous waterfalls. We have no idea what's in store because we were actually driving down the road looking for something completely different or a different waterfall, different park, but it was closed. So here we are making the best of a the situation, we got about three hours or so until we lose uh, all light, so it is go time. I can hear the waterfalls now. So this is pretty cool. Apparently, if you can read that, these, hang on, these trail here are Kuluncus, and they were used by the Yumbos to transport products between the coast and the mountains. And they were traders. So these are not actually built for us to use to get down to a waterfall by some, you know, industrious person trying to improve tourism. These were actually used in the Inca times for trade, and that is cool. This is really cool. So these are obviously one-sided tables. They're made for bird watching. So you sit, obviously, have your camera here, and in front of you, you have the beautiful river with specific birds, obviously, perhaps landing on their branches. No feeders in sight. Very natural, very, very beautiful. And that, my friends, is our bridge. <laughs> okay, okay, Thomas, it says three people at a time. I think we do one. Okay, you ready? Got paper, scissors, loser goes first. Three. Three. One, two, three. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, off you go. Me. Well, we got a lot of instructions, but like, I think this is pretty clear. Well, <laughs> we found our first waterfall. It's a little bit small, a little bit tiny. I think maybe waterfall number two will be better, especially when the waterfall is like next to this beautiful big river. All right, let me show you that properly. Isn't that gorgeous? Let's see if this is Cascada numero dos. We have seen the second waterfall. It's really gorgeous. I found an angle down there that will work really nicely for a beautiful long exposure. And that's what this video is about. Long exposures with moving water. I guess <laughs> we're already at Cascada number three. And I haven't stopped talking. Here we have it. A bit disappointing, but there is another rope, another steep hill to climb. So maybe the fourth and final waterfall will be the best of the four. Look at this stuff. Isn't that gorgeous? Tiny one, but beautiful. 
Got my tripod, got my bowl head. Got filters if I may need them. I don't think so. Got my A705 with the 1635. And I have got myself a waterfall. So my plan is to head out, stand in the water there, get a very simple first shot with the rock and the tiny waterfall in the distance. This one. It's easy to talk with the mic. Yeah, I just went for a swim. <laughs> I'm now in position here, right? So first I went down with my feet, just scouted around with my eyes, no camera, camera in the bag. I then went in with the camera, had a look around with the lens I was intending to use, found the exact angle. I marked the spot visually on the rock in front of me. And now I am lined up with camera here already in front of me. And I'm staring straight in to the waterfall. You can see I got the rock here on my left. I got the waterfall cascading down on my right. And we're now gonna start trying to figure out how to expose this. Obviously I'm shooting as always manual. I think it's the only way I can be accountable for my own photography. The camera didn't make a mistake. I made a mistake if I screw it up, right? I'm gonna be shooting F11 here because I want a bit more depth of field in my image, right? Uh, make sure that I am exactly lined up where I want to be. I'm going to cut away the bottom one-fifth of this image. I already know that. So I'm framing it with that intention. I don't like two by threes when they are vertical. I like four by fives, which means I'm going to cut away the bottom of my screen. And I think my final comp, if you want to see it, is this. It's with the wrong shutter speed for video, but nonetheless, there it is. Three seconds of that. And focusing on the rock that was in the foreground, as a first focus point. Uh, ISO base for this camera is 100. We're gonna pick that. And I photograph most waterfalls at around half a second. For this particular waterfall, the difference between half a second and a longer exposure isn't huge at all, but it's still there. Zooming in on the moving water, the longer exposure has less life than this half second exposure does. For me, half a second is really the sweet spot for most waterfalls, and it's where I always start searching for the perfect image. So I have now set up a very precarious little setup over here. I got one leg on a bunch of roots and about the one on a log. But what I'm getting by doing that is, if I can get this to turn on, is that scene. So now the waterfall is tiny in the scene. I think this here, little pass leading in, greenery leading you in, waterfall, blah, 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 blah. I think it will make for a nice postcard type shot. And that's something I really like to do. Shoot the obvious scene, shoot the postcard. It's easy to understand, easy to digest. And typically, well, they turn out lovely. Do I add much to it as a photographer? Well, maybe a tiny bit by stepping off trail and being in the bushes, but generally speaking, it's the obvious shot. Always shoot the postcard shot because the postcard shot, easy to understand, easy to digest. It shows the location, it's beautiful. And that's what we're gonna do now. That shot over there, recording at one fourth of a second shutter speed, maybe that simulates a little bit what the long exposure will look like from here. Anyway, that's what I got framed up, okay? We're now focusing on this little waterfall. I don't want to change my shutter speed. I want to be at 0 0.4 seconds. I want to be at F11 here. So what I'm changing to fix my exposure is my ISO. The waterfall is clipping at ISO 250, it's clipping at 200. At 160, it's not clipping, there we go. I uh, don't have my shutter release, my little electronic things with me today. Do a two-second timer.
There we have it, a lovely, well-exposed, in-focus little cloud for a scene, and I'm out of focus again. Damn this camera. Anyway, packing up, and we are heading on. We got more trekking to do before this day is over. Thomas, you enjoying yourself? Oh, what a day. There we go. This afternoon has been so good. I 100% agree. And before I topple over from lack of oxygen, I am. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Are you gonna love this? What the f <laughs> Oh, you are joking. You are joking me. Oh, this is the way of the colliery. Oh my God. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, that's um, a, Gonna call the guy on the radio and make sure. I didn't expect a plant like a metallic bird with enough drop. <laughs> that's certain death. How are you feeling about this, Thomas? Surprised. <laughs> um, you need to radio him to say that we're in the thing, right? Well, he's there. His car's there. But he can't see us, surely. It's miles well, away. It's half a kilometre away. I guess you just get in and... Maybe he has binoculars. Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Can you get a colibri? Yes, we're looking for a colibri. The colibri is a thing metal, right? Okay, okay. Yeah, this is it. All right, Thomas. Did you expect to go to Ecuador and die? Thomas, if I don't see you again, you've been a good friend. Ciao. Godspeed. Godspeed. <laughs> bye, Jonas. <laughs> bye, Thomas. Bye, bye. Bye. <laughs> On the good side, the thing actually has wings. So were the wires to break, maybe he will just fly away. So if anyone is curious about this masterpiece of engineering, here we go. I expect this not to be uh, load-bearing. Oh my god. So I used to be a mountaineer, a rock climber. I'm not afraid of heights, but I'm terrified of things like this. Not because of the height itself, but because I don't know who built it. I don't know who maintained it. I don't know if this thing, it's about to it, but this thing will be here a week from now. I honestly don't know. Ah. So graceful. So graceful. Okay, listo in el colibri. Gracias. Oh. <laughs> I hate this. Gorgeous river below. That's the bridge we took to come up here. Uh. <laughs> I'm alive! You gotta love ingenuity like that. This is the engine of the operation. We have a car literally operating. The colibri. And apparently it's rated for four passengers. Hell to the no. This is the engine. 1400. Ah, 1400 cc. Uh -huh. That will get you across. ¿Qué año es ese carro? 1987. So a 1987 car with a 1400 cc engine. He's proud of his ingenuity, his engineering, what he's built. I'm never freaking doing this again, I can tell you that much. But what a place 
Would I come back here to these waterfalls? Yes. Would I come back here to these little shooting spots for birds? 100% yes. This has been one of the best locations I've visited here in Mindo and it's absolutely gorgeous. Lots of potential for more photography than I've done today. But this video has to end somewhere and it ends now. How was the, the colibri? Oh, I'm so happy. Imagine every photo shoot could end that way. <laughs> oh. <laughs>